What's up, nerds? So if you're anything like me, you pick up your phone to do something useful and then you get distracted or, or like waste an hour of your life on Instagram just kind of not doing really what you were set out to do on your phone in the first place. So recently I've been looking and finding different apps that would um, kind of kick this habit and be more productive and save time with my daily life and make my phone less of a distraction than it is. But I want to say that none of these apps are sponsored and there are also some in here that I found from indie developers on Twitter and stuff and I really want to shout those out. So I have a little icon that'll pop up at the bottom when the app was created by an indie developer. I don't want to waste any of your time, so I'm going to go through these apps pretty quickly, but if there's any that you want me to elaborate on or you're just curious about, be sure to drop a comment and I'll try to respond to that or make a video about it, depending on what the topic is. So let's jump straight into the video. So my five pillars that I have are productivity, time management, health, communication, and finance. So I'm going to start out with productivity. So I know this is more of a general term, but these productivity apps have actually helped me in my daily life to get things done. And one that I've used for a long time is called Sorted. So Sorted's super nice, I have all my to-do list right here. And so if I wanna create a new one, I just swipe down on the page and I can create a new one. So I'll just write test right here. And what's super nice that I haven't seen a lot of to-do list apps have is you can make sub to-do list within it. And so in the sub to-do list, I can just write sub to-do list and I can have titles going on in here. So like new item or whatever, whatever I wanna write. And then I just write something here. So sub second to-do list. I know I'm very creative right now. But if I go out of here, and I wanna move this to, let's say next Tuesday. So I just grab on here, I grab the date, and I move it to next Tuesday. And so if I go to next Tuesday, it's sitting right there, but let's say I wanna do it at 4 p.m. So I just click and drag right here. Uh, so to get to 4 p.m., I just drag it the other way. So I'm gonna drag it all the way to four. And now it's right at 4 p.m. If I wanna add a reminder to this, I just click into the to-do, and I hit alert on time, or I can change the reminder time. So whenever I want it to set, so I could do like, an hour before, an hour and a half before. So it's just kind of nice that you can get those early reminders. And it's nice that it lays it out. So if I go on this calendar view, it's gonna show me these green dots where I, wherever I have to do's. Normally I do it the night before, so I only have a to-do list for today. But it's just super nice, and on your home screen it will pop up every single day, and you can just click and you actually check off to-do list from your home screen, which is pretty nice. Um, and this widget kind of takes me into my neck app that really has helped me use my phone a lot less and reduce that screen time, which is Minimalist Flow Launcher. So I am on iOS 18, so it does kind of break the launcher because it's not developed for beta software yet, but it has worked in the past and it is something that I actually really enjoy having on my phone. So if I go to Minimalist Phone Launcher right here, uh, I just have to hit add or edit favorites and I can click on whatever app I want to have in here or if they don't have one I can actually contact the developer straight from the app to add an app whatever I want so it'll probably pop up in a future update but from everything that I've seen they've had every app that I really wanted to add and you really don't want to add too many apps to this probably like five to ten so five to ten of your favorite apps will be on here and if I go back, you can change your top widgets. So these look super nice. These are just different clock icons or you can just have it be straight up blank up there. And if you wanna add the widget, same as you add any other widget, you just hold on your home screen right here and hit edit, add widget and scroll down. It's gonna be one of those blank ones. So it says minimal phone launcher right there. You just click into that and add that. And it will look something like this, uh, except it'll look a lot better. It'll look like these screenshots here. Next, we have one that I'm sure you've never heard of, which is Notion, uh, but actually specifically the Notion mobile app. So the Notion mobile app used to really be bad, but I feel like they've updated a lot in the past few weeks. Um, and so if I go into the Notion app, they changed the homepage now. So I have all of my stuff laid out, like my pages and stuff, but what's really helpful is the jump back in feature. So my YouTube schedule right here, I have all my ideas right there. Uh, so it's just super nice. I can add them and filter through views and stuff. Now it's not the most mobile friendly app still. It's really optimized for the computer, but it is nice that I get a view page for each thing that I want to find. And the search function is super nice. If I want to search for any note, I can find them super easily in here. Next we have another one that I'm sure you never heard of, which is ChatGPT. Now the ChatGPT app is just super, super user friendly. You just click right into it and it pops right into a new chat window. You add photos, videos, any file you want. But the thing that I really enjoy about it is the actual speaking feature. So normally I have an AirPod in, looks like I'm on the phone, but I can talk through anything at once. So if I have like an assignment or an email I need to send, I can talk it out with the AI and it'll actually just copy down some of the text that I personally say. And so it's just super nice. I could do things while driving. If I'm stuck in traffic, I'm not wasting time just sitting in traffic complete a video idea or do things like that, write full on scripts just while I'm in the car on my AirPods. So 
it is something that I use pretty much every single day and it's saved me tons of time because now time that I would have wasted in the past has now become useful time and it really frees up my time to enjoy the things that I actually want to enjoy. Lastly is one by a indie developer called Today. Now I haven't personally used it, but I do appreciate their subscription. So obviously indie developers gotta pay the bills, you know? So the subscription's only $10 a year. And so it's just a really nice to-do list. So it lays out what you need to do so I can create some tasks. So I put in here like uh, film, right? So what I'm doing right now is film and I can change whatever project I want it to be in so I have it for YouTube. And if I go to today, it'll show me uh, that I have 80% of my tasks done for today. So I already put some fake ones there. And then you can switch through and uh, they have different pages and stuff to put on your background. So different cards, you can randomize it and you can change if it's uh, light or dark, which is kind of nice. And you just hit save card. And right here, I just click uh, on the today and then click off the to-do list. So it's a super simple to-do list app, but I feel like you don't want your to-do list app to be very intrusive and you want to have a good UI design because you just want to get to your to-do list and make that to-do list. You don't want to have to deal with a clunky UI or anything like that. And I feel like this app really achieves that. Next, we're moving on to my second pillar, which is time management. Time management is something that I don't want to get distracted when I'm on my phone. I really want to use my time intentionally when I'm on my phone, so I want to get done whatever I'm trying to get done. Social media apps like Instagram and stuff just really waste my time, so I don't really want to go on those unless I have a reason for going on those. So my next app, Refocus, really helps you do this. So Refocus, you just click into Refocus right here. You tell it what apps you want to ban, and once you want to use those apps, you hit Stop Blocking, and you set your time limit. So if I only want to be on it for 10 minutes, and I know I only need to be on it for 10 minutes, I can hit stop blocking for 10 minutes. But otherwise, if I go into Instagram right here, and I go into the app, it'll say Instagram is blocked by refocus. And one thing that I love about this is that it doesn't offer me an option to get rid of it immediately. Because I feel like the built-in Apple one, since it offers you to unblock it for an infinite amount of time just straight from this page, I feel like it's a lot more likely for you to click into that. But now, if I go on Instagram and I'm not really thinking about it, I have this block that tells me, hey, do you really want to use this? It's kind of nice for that reason. There's a more lethal option of this called Forfeit, which will actually charge you if you use the app outside of your downtime hours. Um, I personally have not used it yet, so I can't attest to how well that works, but I have seen that on the App Store as like a solution to this problem, and that's if you're really like addicted to using social media and stuff, I feel like that will help you a lot more. Is Deadline, so Deadline actually has a widget, and it'll just show you how far along you are in a filming process. So you can see right here, I have the filming, and you see my bars going through right here. So if I click on it, and then I can hit edit, you'll see in here I have the deadline for tomorrow at 2 p.m., but let's change it to today at 3 p.m., right? And you'll see that bar is a little bit over halfway through because it's 2.20, and if I go on my home screen, you'll see that bar should update to a little bit over halfway through. And you can do this for different era months. So if you have like savings goals or a big goal that you're saving up to or a trip, it's just nice that you can see time pass by and it feels like it goes by a lot faster because you're seeing that bar and it might push you to more action towards that goal. This is Remind Faster, which is literally just a companion app to the Reminders app, but it's honestly really nice. So once I click straight in Remind Faster, it's going to pull straight into a new reminder and then I could say film video, for example. And if I want to do it today at 6 p.m., I click 6 p.m., but let's say I want to do it at 7, I just hit plus hour, 8, 9, whatever I want. And so all I have to do, I can add a note right here or I could add a location if I want to do that as well. I just hit send and boom, the reminder is done, already added. So it's just a really fast, intuitive way to use the reminders app instead of going through Apple's uh, original channel. But if I do go into my reminders app, it does push whatever reminder I have to the reminders app. So if I go in here to today, you see it says film video right there at 9 p.m. So it's just nice that it has that integration to it, but it's just a super quick app and they have a really fast widget as well if you want to use the widget version. Into my third pillar, which is health. Now, I did not realize all the stuff that they put in the foods like preservatives and stuff. And recently I found this because it's the number one app on the app store for health and that's called Yuka. So you scan any product in the grocery store and stuff and see whatever preservatives they're putting in it. That you wouldn't expect to be as bad as they are, uh, see on this app. So I have like blueberry muffins from Trader Joe's. I see it has five additives to avoid and I click into it, it says there's two hazardous ones and it'll tell me why they're hazardous. So a lot of times food can cause ADHD and things like that and it's just something that you really want to avoid and download this app you'll realize how widespread this is. I heard a stat saying like 70% of the food has like hazardous additives to it. If you eat them you probably won't get sick or anything but it's just something that you want to be mindful of and you don't want to consume too much of it if you don't have to.
Again, like the Today app, this one has a really reasonable subscription fee. So it's actually 10 to $20 a year and you get to decide whatever you want to pay. So a year subscription fees for the year are a lot nicer than for the month. I feel like a 10 to $20 subscription fee for the year is just a really good deal. Consists of an app called Days Since. So Days Since is actually super nice because what it does is tell me how many days since I've done something. So if I have like an addictive tendency or like uh, I eat like with that health aspect if I eat like an, like an unhealthy food or something that I'm trying to avoid I could actually just go in here and add and I can say literally it has junk food as an example so I'll just hit junk food right here and let's say I just ate junk food I'll click on it and I'll hit reset counter and so now I'm at zero seconds so if I go through and hit edit add widget and I go into it it has a really nice widget so it'll just show me how many days it's been since I ate junk food and you can have different streaks and stuff. And it's actually proven scientifically that the larger the streak, the less likely you are to do something. So people who are like seven years sober are way less likely to give back into that addiction than somebody who is only a year sober. Next is an app called Patterns. So what Patterns is, is literally the opposite of Days Since. So this one, you can count how many days you've been doing whatever routine you want to get into. So I have like film video, you see I clicked it today. Um, and I can unclick it right here and it'll tell me how many streaks or how long I've been doing it for. So it says one week right there. Let's say I want to hit the gym three days a week. So I just click on all three and there you go. I have my one week streak. Drink water every day. So I just click in every single day. And you can change it. So it says I have a five day streak right here. And you can change it for the weekend. And since it has only Monday through Friday, you can change it to have Monday through Sunday. Um, which is just a really nice feature. Since it's so nicely laid out, it just makes it more usable and stuff. And this also has a widget you can add to your home screen. Uh, I think the widget looks super nice. And if you're really trying to get into those better routines and stuff, I feel like this app will help you along with that. Um, my fourth category is social media alternatives. So I feel like social media is fun and a lot of times you are on your phone and you're really not doing anything, but there's social media that's better than others. So Instagram, for example, is one that I feel like it could be helpful. There's a lot of really cool things on there and TikTok, for example, is another one where it's nice, but you go on it and you waste an hour or two when you're just on it to like see something from one of your friends or something. They're just social medias that I feel Feel like uh, the risk is not worth the benefit there where you're wasting two hours of time when you might find one or two things that are helpful and it's like harder to remember a shorts video than it would be like an actual video or just to like read an article or something like that so i feel like it's just really not worth it for those so some alternatives that i have here is pinterest so pinterest is one that i found myself using a lot more and more people like to think of it for like middle-aged moms or whatever but pinterest actually has a lot of great design ideas and video ideas and stuff and it's helped me a lot with like designing rooms and things like that so i really love pinterest but one step above that is an app called save with two E's and so save actually has a curated feed. So Pinterest is anyone can upload, save, they upload it themselves. Uh, and that means you get a lot more quality content, especially if you're like graphic design or you're into video editing and things like that. It just has super great photography and like fonts and video editing stuff. So I would suggest save it if you haven't checked it out yet. It's kind of like the upgrade from Pinterest, although I would keep Pinterest around because save doesn't have as much stuff as Pinterest does. But that's it for my communication section. I would say Reddit is also on here as like a double-edged sword. I mean, I feel like I find a lot of useful things on there, but I've basically blocked out my Reddit like homepage or whatever. Instead, I only search for things in specific subreddits when I need to find specific advice like I make my own espresso every day and there's an espresso subreddit that helps me out a lot with uh, that learning journey and that process. Lastly is my fifth pillar which is finances. So I personally use SoFi and like I said before this isn't sponsored or anything I just really love SoFi's interface and things like that. It's just a super great card and bank and stuff and since you can set up different savings accounts and stuff I feel like it's really helped me save a lot more money than I would have with just like a basic Chase account. So SoFi is great. I'm not going to open into the app for obvious reasons. I don't want to show off all my bank statements and stuff. But uh, yeah, SoFi is really good and I suggest you check it out. If you use my referral down below, I think you get like 25 bucks and uh, I get 75 bucks as a like full disclosure and stuff. But it is a super great bank and I would suggest checking. But as far as tracking your expenses goes, uh, I have three different ways that you could do this. So if you're not really into tracking expenses, you just want to sort of save money and stuff, I would suggest Rocket Money. Rocket Money is just really meant for your phone. You go on it and it gives you monthly breakdowns of like what you're spending on and like what you're spending for this month is. It's just a nice app to get that overall view of what you're spending and how to break down your budget. 
Now, if you're a little bit more into tracking finances or you want to get a little bit more of a detail on it, uh, YNAB, which is you need a budget, is a great app for that since it actually lets you break down categories and things like that. And the categories are really nice in YNAB and it does give a lot more comprehensive data on how you're spending your money. But again, if you're not someone who likes tracking all that data, totally understand that I feel like Rocket Money is the better play for that. And Rocket Money is about $3 a month, where YNAB, I believe, is around $10 a month. So if you do want to pay that extra seven bucks, it might be worth it for you just to see that because you might be saving more than $7 just by looking at what you're spending and things like that. Um, and lastly, I just use Excel. Uh, I feel like Excel is the best, but if you're not super into like writing out spreadsheets, again, the other two are great. But lastly, if you find yourself using these apps, and they're just really not working for you. I would suggest getting these on paper. So I actually bought like a budget planner for uh, every month and I feel like this helps me a lot with just budgeting out my money and stuff. I feel like I'm more of a paper guy. I need to see it on paper to actually like visualize what I'm doing. This calendar was about $7 and uh, it's for the whole year and it's just the super nice layout and stuff. And I use this to uh, calendar out all my events when I do all my to-dos on my phone. And if you're interested in the whole organization flow that I have going on, be sure to drop a comment letting me know. I'll try to make a video about that. But um, yeah, I have a whole system going here. And then my budget book, I feel like it's just nice that you can see. And then I copy all the data from my budget book over to an Excel spreadsheet. The ChatGPT app is actually really useful in that. I can take a picture of the page and it'll grab all the data out of uh, whatever I wrote on the page for all my monthly spending. So it's just nice, it saves me a lot of time there. I would suggest checking out those if the apps aren't working for you. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to like and drop a comment about what your favorite app is. Uh, a lot of times you guys actually help me out and tell me things that I really didn't even know about before. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to see more videos about like uh, ownership or things like that, I got this video right here or I got that subscribe button right there if you want to join the community. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. See ya.